All right, we are ready to kick off. Um, so again, thanks for joining us. I'm going to get us started here with a quick introductory video. So what we can do is it's a really simple product. Uh, this is on an app. You can uh, download it on your phone, and this will connect with any phone. So you can have one in your clinic that you can use on any patient that comes in. So they just connect this via Bluetooth to your phone or your app, and you can adjust this threshold of sensitivity. So tighten your muscle up, squeeze really hard. You see she's got a really good contraction. Now relax it. And we set the on and off time to you know, 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, and we cycle that back and forth over a 10 minute period. Tighten up again, squeeze hard. Now we're gonna make it harder, and she's gotta make a little bit harder contraction. Becca, to keep that up there. Now squeeze hard. Come on, pull hard. Hard, 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 hard. hard. So that's it's her good. threshold. And she can see the color, and if, right. if it's yellow, you say squeeze more. And so she's you hit definitely the, gonna try hit harder. the play button here, and it says relax. Just hold it there for a second, you can see it. And then it'll say flex in a second, and then she'll flex. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. You squeeze hard now. Oh, sorry. Force the back of your knee straight and keep that light full. Keep it full all the way, pull hard. So it, you know, it helps with quad re-education. In this case, it helps with extension also. No doubt, she just had right. 20 degrees of Rika bottom there. Exactly. <laughs> so then the other thing we can do with this is we can play a game. So we're gonna adjust this, to make it a little bit easier to play the game. So the game is something that everyone enjoys. So we've got a little bicycle. This is our, our first game that we've developed. <laughs> and uh, so you squeeze your muscle. Okay, so you get oh the bike to go gosh. up in the air. Hold it there. <laughs> All right, so you're fixing to go up the ramp. Dip it up so the cameras can see it there. Yeah, squeeze hard. You got to keep it up there to catch all the stars. So she's, okay. she's keeping her quad. She's keeping her quad. Now relax in a second. And see, so you can go back down. And squeeze hard, squeeze hard, this hard, like hard, e. hard, this and like e. rest. <laughs> okay, so our patients love this. They're extremely compliant. You know, it helps with muscle re-education. And not only for rehab, but I've got some strength and conditioning people that are coming in. They're really interested in this too. Right, so that was just a quick little intro, like I mentioned, um, and I will introduce myself. I'm Amy, I'm a product rep here at M-Trigger. Um, my colleague Katie is also on, if you guys have any questions. Um, again, like I said, feel free to throw them in the chat um, and we will get those addressed. So thanks for spending some time with us this morning. Uh, we're gonna go over a little bit of background on the system and then we will get into some applications. Um, I'm gonna set it up for you guys. I've got my hardware ready to go. We can run through the app in real time as well. Um, pretty custom to what you guys need. So feel free to submit those questions and we're gonna get started here. We all obviously know that when someone comes into um, a therapeutic exercise, because of therapy and occupational therapy and athletic training situation, um, that they are experiencing some sort of muscle activation problem, right? So when they're, they might have a fusion, they might have pain, they might have had a, a planned surgery, or they might have had an obviously unplanned injury, but they are experiencing some type of issue with their um, activation of their muscles and control of those muscles that prohibits them from functioning um, the way that they would like to, whether that's kind of in daily activity or in a return to sport situation. Um, and that Function issues, those functional issues are typically caused by some version of um, control issues or atrophy. Uh, we can see weakness, that can lead to asymmetry, um, improper recruitment patterns, that can all increase our re-injury risk if we don't resolve it as part of a therapeutic exercise program. Because ultimately we want them returning to that function. We want to reverse that inhibition where we see inhibition, we want to increase control where we're seeing a lack of control. We want to wake up our type 1 fibers and re-engage that entire neuromuscular pathway because that's really the point of biofeedback of participating in an exercise or a therapeutic exercise program is we want to regain that control, right? It's the whole point is to get someone, get those outcomes, get them out of therapy. So we want them controlling that neuromuscular pathway as early and as often as we can. Uh, just to make some examples here, um, they're a little bit on the sports medicine side, um, but again, we're happy to discuss kind of any version of um, applications for arm trigger. But in post-surgical knee patients, quads are obviously a huge, huge target muscle. You want to get that strength back up, you want to get that control and activation back where it needs to be. And so if we can monitor that activation from the get-go, you can track progress, you can compare to the healthy side, um, and you can kind of see that that quad functionality has a direct relationship with returning to function. Um, on the other side, um, 
of physically, <laughs> I guess, of the leg, but on the other side of the coin, the hamstring also is very critical for return to sport. Um, and we know that um, programs that incorporate elements of neuromuscular control, programs that look at symmetry of activation um, and also at um, relaxation training in the hamstring so that we can actually activate the quad for say extension and gait retraining, uh, those all reduce our risk of re-injury and biofeedback can help with all of those things. It's very, very versatile and low risk. So when we're looking at biofeedback, what we're really trying to emphasize is this order of recruitment, right? Henneman's size principle states that we're gonna, our natural recruitment order um, addresses small motor units first, progressing up through larger motor units, and we're gonna increase strength by preventing um, well, asynchronous contraction, um, but we're gonna increase that strength naturally, right? We wanna activate the smaller slow twitch fibers first, moving up through type two. So with biofeedback, and recreating that uh, natural recruitment pattern on every single rep and understanding what's happening with real-time data, we're gonna facilitate that neuromuscular re-education, encourage volitional control. We're gonna have improved accuracy also because we're making something that is usually invisible, visible, right? We, you can't always see a muscle activate. Um, sometimes you can, right? But on the smaller muscles, on muscles that might be a little bit more difficult for people to isolate. Um, we want to show them visually, you know, and we can show them on a screen in the case of M trigger, what that activation looks like in real time. So we can increase their accuracy, increase um, their ability to perform that exercise correctly, right? And the more correct reps we do, the more value we're going to get out of them. Um, and the visual feedback also provides a lot of motivation to have a better understanding of what they're doing and why, if they understand the control they have over it, they're a lot more engaged mentally. And we really want to remember that a lot of the point of biofeedback is that it's an active modality, as opposed to something like STEM, which certainly has its place, but STEM is a passive modality, right? We're stimulating kind of across all of those different fiber types. Um, we're not always actively engaging the muscle on top of the STEM. Um, and so what we wanna do is incorporate that whole patient, right? that cognitive link to function really create that mind-body connection so that that motor learning can happen faster and it can have more long-term outcomes because STEM isn't going to control our muscles forever. Our own bodies can control our muscles forever, right? That is the longevity that we want to be reinforcing. And we can also quantify progress with that real-time data, like I mentioned before, because you have that visual quantitative feedback and you can do things like compare to the healthy contralateral counterpart. Um, we can look at, you know, our symmetry increase, our deficit decrease, our um, output increase over time. Those are all ways that we can quantify progress. So ultimately, what M-Trigger offers is this portable, it's on a mobile platform, SEMG biofeedback um, that helps the programs you're already using that you know work best for your patients deliver function faster, right? You know what's best for them and you are in control of their program. So why not add more data, make those programs a little bit more rich um, and get way more value at kind of amplify what you're already doing. So again, just to reiterate, we're getting real-time data. We're speeding up motor learning, improving accuracy, and we get all of these benefits on the right. We're gonna get healthy, accurate recruitment. We're gonna gain strength and control, and your patients are gonna be more emotionally um, engaged and motivated. So M-Trigger, as an overview, like I mentioned, is on a mobile platform. So that application, that mobile app is where you're going to do all of your interacting with the system, basically. So that is either on a phone or a tablet. Um, and other than that, the hardware is really simple. This is what we've got, right? So it's very basic hardware. Once you're set up, all of your interactions are going to happen on the app. Um, and it's a pretty straightforward mobile interface. We wanted to keep it relatively simple, but um, nuanced enough that you can customize it any way you see fit for your patients. We've got dual channel monitoring. Uh, I touched on that before, but we'll get into some examples of that in a little bit. And it's really simple to set up. You're going to connect your Bluetooth to the app, you're gonna place your electrodes on one or two target muscles, and then you're going to customize those settings and jump into train or games. Uh, we do have gamification built in as well. 
So this is just a quick overview of the app interface. And like I mentioned, we are going to uh, jump into the app in real time in a little bit. Um, but just to kind of get you familiar on the left here, we've got some settings. Again, you can choose single or dual channel. Uh, you can lock your goals kind of together, sync them together, um, or you can turn that off if you'd like to adjust them independently, but you can set your goal uh, for channel one or channel two. We talk a lot about max voluntary contraction goal um, with M-Trigger because it's that's definitely the thing that people I think are the least familiar with. But the thing is that you can't really do it wrong. Biofeedback is a no risk modality, right? We're not applying any current. Um, we're not doing anything to the patient. Like I mentioned, it's all active. So really all that goal is doing is it's adjusting the top of this meter that you see um, in the train screen at the center. Um, and so it's really just customizing the feedback for that patient. Um, and it's something that we, we want them to kind of be flirting with that green zone, right? We want them to be motivated to hit the green. We want them to be working hard. And that's why we're always comparing to our maximum voluntary contraction for strengthening exercises. For inhibition, it works a little bit differently. You would want to set your goal kind of at the point of a uh, resting tone, uh, resting tonicity, and you want to relax out of that. So again, super versatile, uh, but that goal is really a, a pretty critical setting. And we do have that button at the top there on the left that says launch MVC channel one setup. Um, that is a 30 second protocol that'll help you get your goal in the right spot if you're not feeling super comfortable. But we also find a really nice way to do it is just to get kind of get your hands dirty. We always say that's the best way to understand what M-Trigger can do. Uh, get into train, get your electrodes on, get into train, and do a few reps of, of the exercise you're attempting to monitor. See what that person's activation levels are um, for that day on that rep with that level of resistance, with that level of fatigue they might be experiencing, and customize your feedback based on that. That's kind of the whole shtick. Um, you'll see at the bottom there on the left too as well, we've got time settings, so you can set some trigger up to kind of count your reps for you. Right, so if you are, you know, potentially double booked, you're setting somebody up, having them do their exercises, you have to step away for a moment, they're still getting feedback on every single rep, right? Because you're, you've set your goal, so they know what their comparison is to their maximum. You've set your total time, on time, off time. So they have every rep kind of cued. Um, you can see in the middle here on the train screen, we're kind of in the middle of a contraction rep. So um, they're getting that visual and counting cue on every single one. They're not sitting there having to count for themselves or how they're doing. Um, they're getting all of that feedback. We also do have channel one audio, um, which we probably won't go over today, just as I'm not, so I'm not talking over it, but it, you can set that up if you have someone who's doing something that is a little bit more um, perhaps dynamic or you have someone who's vision or balance impaired and you don't necessarily want them looking at a visual interface for the entire time, uh, they can get that audio cue as well. Um, and something else to mention here with the timing settings is you don't have to set the time. Uh, you can get feedback. You will always get feedback in um, the train mode of M-Trigger, uh, whether you are timing and recording that, that session or not. Um, so even if you aren't recording and you just want the real time um, during, during that session feedback, you can get that without even worrying about the time settings. That is great for more dynamic or functional movements if you want to see where activation is happening in a particular movement arc, say, as opposed to something where you do a contract and hold, like an isometric or something like that. Um, on the right, we've got our track screen. So if you do a time session in train um, and you save your data, which is optional, um, that will save to the phone or tablet that you've recorded on. And what it'll save is this output over here to the right. So we've got our graph which is our actual EMG activity in the green compared to our goal. And you'll notice that our goal line isn't just a straight line across the top because as we mentioned before, we, want, we don't want to contract and contract harder, right? Half of control is being able to turn a muscle off. So we want to be monitoring those periods of relaxation as well. So our goal on those periods of relaxation is to quiet the muscle as much as possible. So you'll be able to see that visually on the graph. And then if you give just a quick tap on the graph in the app, you will see that average maximum voluntary contraction. So that is an average of the work basically done during the contraction periods. And that is the sustained level of contraction. That's what we wanna see increasing over time. Um, it's also something you're gonna see increase with increased effort. So with resistance um, or added body weight, anything like that. Um, and those sessions are all just time stamped 
uh, saved locally, like I mentioned. So if a patient does or athlete does come in and records on their own phone, they have their own data. Um, we see about a 50-50 split with um, patients using their own phones versus kind of an in-clinic iPad. So that is totally up to you. The app is completely free. It's available across iOS and Android. So now we're gonna get into some applications. So this is definitely my favorite way to kind of show what mTrigger can do. Uh, like we mentioned, super versatile, any superficial target muscle that you wanna strengthen or relax or improve recruitment pattern in some way, you can learn more, you can show more data about what you're doing with mTrigger. So on the left here, we've got a gait retraining uh, patient. They have, um, in this video, just had one week of biofeedback intervention, strengthening the anterior tibialis for drop foot. And we will let that video speak for itself a bit. So there he's in train mode. And here he's doing the same exercise, but in game but in a game, that's Trailblazer. So you can do the exact same exercise, set everything up the same way, um, and use the games as a kind of a different form of visual feedback. Uh, we do find the games to be very motivating for athletes in particular, uh, kind of driving that competitive spirit, right? Um, and it's just something where you're not sitting there counting 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Uh, it's a little bit more engaging. Um, and we know that gamification kind of also reinforces uh, the uh, motor learning process with our, you know, reward mechanisms, uh, biological reward mechanisms, all that good nerdy stuff. We have a bunch of articles on that um, if anybody's interested. And then speaking of the games, this second video also incorporates a game. This is a little bit sped up, but what he's got here is the M trigger on both hamstrings. So he's got one channel on the left, one channel on the right hamstring, um, and he's just doing some resisted flexion to control the tilt of uh, the board in the app itself. So he's with his uh, flexion there is controlling basically the direction the ball rolls. The game is not that fast, but <laughs> still a good demonstration. And then on the right here, we've got what is probably one of the most typical scenarios. We've got someone just out of knee surgery looking to reactivate that quad. And she's doing some long arc quads, but you can do this on any quad set. So she's working pretty hard. I would probably bring her goal down a little bit because we do want people She's hitting yellow, so that, that's pretty good, um, but it might be a little bit hard for her. She might be a little bit fatigued. She looks like she's in a little bit of discomfort. Um, but that's one of the other great things about the visual feedback is that if people are, um, you know, distracted by their discomfort or, you know, guarding at all, you can see that activation um, kind of in spite of, in spite of that, and they can see what's happening in real time and kind of correct for it. super, super important post me to get that quad going. Um, and with dual channel, with quad, you can actually look at compensation. Um, like I mentioned before, with the hamstrings, you can also look at glute compensation, and you can look at side to side comparing to that quad. So those are kind of examples of dual channel as well. So in terms of upper extremity, obviously we've also got a lot of flexibility here. On this first video on the left, I was just looking, this is a post shoulder impingement, and we're just looking at general rotator cuff activation, we've got um, kind of the cuff on cha one channel and we've got a, sorry, a lower trap, excuse me, on uh, the other channel. And we're just looking for activation across both here. So you're not always necessarily looking for compensation, but you can get two channels of feedback always. And this is a, this is a, a tough exercise. He fatigues. Um, Quite a bit, but you can see here he's not doing uh, a timed session. He's just coming in and out of this positioning, making sure that he's activating uh, when he's at the top of that position. In the middle here, we're going to kind of back, kind of going to come back to that uh, compensation 
idea. So we are looking at um, ice, or, um, controlling um, in overhead movement lats versus upper trap, kind of quieting that upper trap. That's a really common thing, obviously, when you're looking at shoulder rehab, uh, particularly for overhead athletes. Um, and so again, we want to maximize lats on channel one that's on the left, and then minimize upper traps, which is going to be on the right. This is a quick loop, so I may play it twice. And again, I would probably bring his goal down a bit because we want to see a little bit more, um, a little bit more activation than that. But here you can see on the right that we're really trying to keep that upper trap right at the bottom there while we increase lat activation. So that one, that just that setup kind of just brings some awareness, right? Because it's not always the easiest to isolate activation or inhibition um, during more functional things like overhead motor control. We just want to bring some information uh, to the patient so they can kind of correct in real time. And here we've just got some wrist, extens uh, wrist extension training. Um, so obviously this is on his extensor wad um, and we're kind of looking at concentric and eccentric here. So you can look at different phases of motion, right? Um, and look at the activation comparing, uh, comparing the two. So he's trying to get his, act his activation up there. All right, and then last couple of little shoulder demonstrations. Um, again, we're gonna be wanting to quiet uh, that upper trap. Obviously, like I said, that's pretty common. And here we're activating the lower trap. And ultimately, we're looking to reinforce that proper recruitment, uh, strengthen where we wanna strengthen and not rely so much on that lower trap. Um, this is a pretty, these are some pretty um, common exercises that you might used to address anything with rotator cuff impingement or um, if you're working on scapular stability, trying to get that in the appropriate position. Uh, these, are, these are a great setup. So you can see we got a really strong contraction on the lower trap and upper trap is staying nice and quiet on channel two. And again, he's kind of doing a little bit more of a quick firing here. He's not doing a super sustained hold. But you could set that up either way. You could have the hold in that, um, in that proper positioning, uh, making sure that your activation is something that you're able to sustain, or you can do something more like this with a little bit more, I tend to call it free form when you're in train, uh, train mode with no timer. So again, just to emphasize, we've been over a lot of examples of this, but we can use M-Trigger with one or two um, channels. So we're getting different versions of, or different levels of monitoring. Uh, we can time it or we can do something a little bit more dynamic. We can use our train mortar, we can game, we can look at activating and strengthening or inhibiting. Um, we saw a lot of larger muscle groups today in these videos, um, but uh, wrist extensors are a little bit smaller. You can even get down to the muscles of the hand and face and neck um, with the biofeedback. With dual channel, we can look at um, a bilateral setup like we saw with that hamstring video with the game, or we can look at compensation. Um, which there are so many different versions of that, but some, what we saw was kind of quieting that upper trap in a lot of shoulder exercises. Um, we can do basic isometrics through more dynamic movements all the way to functional. You can use it to kind of diagnose deficits, but then also throughout a program to monitor how those are improving. Um, we can use it in clinic. We see a lot of clinics send people home with it since they do have access to that free app. Um, we know that often neurological problems can become orthopedic problems, so we want to address that cognitive link to function from the beginning, get the entire body working together to get the result that we want long term. Uh, we work with a lot of athletes, but also with a lot of people who just have kind of average, average problem coming in for orthopedic assistance, and we can use it preventatively if you do know that you have a surgery coming up to do some prehab, to do some strengthening, to kind of compare to a healthy baseline. Um, and then uh, look at things post-op. So to just go over some pricing quickly, our most popular is our clinical bundle. That's three units um, and all your accessories here. And that runs for 1250. Our individual unit is only 449. 
Um, so if you do just want to get started with that, um, that is also an option. And then our sensing electrodes are custom to you. So overall, just to re-drive home these points, we're looking at neuromuscular re-education by encouraging voluntary contraction and control, right? Not always strengthening and contraction, but control and inhibition as well. We want to use that real-time data to facilitate neuromotor learning. We want to get the body doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and it's just way more motivational for someone to have visual feedback and it increases their compliance and accuracy over time. You can improve those outcomes for almost any person who walks in your door. Anytime you want to know more about recruitment patterns, activation, inhibition, strength, um, anytime that you want to know more about that, I'm sure can show you a little more about what is going on in real time. All right, so I am going to get set up physically. Um, and show you guys that setup real quick. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to pop them into the chat. Y'all right, should be able to see my screen now. So I'm going to head into the app itself. I'm going to connect my Bluetooth first and foremost, always. I'm set up, just need a little bit of time to calibrate, but if you do that first and then set your electrodes up, you should be good to go. So I'm just going to put my electrodes on my wrist extensors here. Um, so anytime you see activation, it's a really similar setup to that third upper extremity video we saw. Um, anytime you see an activation here, I'm just going to be doing a really basic unresisted wrist extensor. Um, I've got channel one on my left arm, channel two on my right arm. That's to kind of mimic a um, involved versus healthy setup. My left arm, my left forearm has a um, fairly strong dominance effect that you will be able to see. So it's a nice little way to kind of show um, that we would ordinarily put our uh, primary target muscle on channel one. Uh, so in this screen here, you can access some uh, resources. These are all in our regular settings screen as well. But if you are coming in from a session, where you know what your goal should be. Say you've written that down in, in your notes from this patient's last session. You can just type that right in, decide whether you want single or dual, and get right out of there and ready to go. Um, so I'll jump, jump into train and then we'll come back to settings. So you can see my left arm here, my right arm here. Um, and that goal is actually in a pretty easy spot for me just because it's pretty early in the day. I haven't done any other demos yet, so not seeing much fatigue. Um, you can see me talking with my hands up here, but again, here's left, here's right, we're going to quiet in the middle, and here is at the same time. So you can see when they're activated at the same time, it's just a little bit harder for me to keep that um, kind of what we're going to call our involved channel all the way to the top. And that's pretty much where you want to be. You want it to be achievable, green, the green zone, kind of the success zone for strengthening. Um, you want that to be achievable, but not impossible. Um, but not too easy as well, right? So we're kind of looking for that sweet spot. Um, but like I said, because it is all uh, just reading the activity that your body is producing, there is no risk to changing that goal, moving the electrodes around, just getting comfortable uh, with where you want that, what you want that feedback to look like. So I'm gonna hit play, this is just a really quick, it's gonna be one rep so you can see the relax cue. So we're always gonna start with the relax anytime we do a time session. And then I'm going to hit that contract and we're going to hold, 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 and we're done. So I'm not going to save this session because it's one rep, but I will show you if we did save it, that would go to trap. So I'm going to do that. So here we're looking at channel one, and we're averaging right around 500, and channel two was around 3.30. And again, we can look at that real-time uh, data right there. Uh, if you do get a little cluttered here, you can always delete a session or if you accidentally save something. Um, let me just go into settings real quick, make sure we got over everything. I believe that we touched on everything here, but we've got our channel mode, match goals. Um, you can adjust this goal by sliding, just kind of grab that little slider right there, or you can type right in. 
um, and you can set your total time on time off time. Uh, you can turn your audio on. You can check your battery level. And then we've got some resources at the bottom here um, with where to place electrodes, um, tips and tricks for electrodes, tips on setting your goal and kind of the, the concepts and methodology behind max voluntary contraction. And then we've got full video training guides uh, that run you through every module of the app as well as FAQs. So we've got some resources built in and there's also a lot of great stuff on our website, our blog um, and our Instagram are great places to go to kind of see mTrigger in action and uh, see what it's, what it's doing. And then Let's talk and talk about the neuromuscular deficit test while we're in here. We didn't touch on that too much. So this is a one minute kind of symmetry assessment. Um, bilateral setup is the most common uh, way that we see this used. And we're going to have our involved, affected, injured, whatever we want to call it, limb on channel one, and its healthy contralateral counterpart on channel two. And we're going to do a few five second maximum contractions comparing our neuromuscular output. Um, so like when, basically when I do this as an example on my, just my forearms, I have about 10, 10 to 15% deficit um, between my forearms just because I'm right-handed, right? So symmetry, as, as you all know, is um, you're not necessarily always shooting for zero, right? But it's a really nice way to kind of look at what is going on um, and, and track that progress. Because if you come out of surgery and you have an 80% quad deficit, right? You want to get that as close to symmetry as you can to ensure a safe return to function. Uh, there are a lot of functional movement tests that don't necessarily take into account um, neuromuscular control, but you can see uh, neuromuscular control progress right along with strength and force metrics um, that are also used in return to sport. And then our games are right here as well. Um, you guys saw a couple of examples of those, but you can just tap into play and then uh, launch each game. Um, muscle ball is the one with the little, the maze tilt, uh, you're, you're controlling that little ball. Um, and you also saw Trailblazer, uh, which they're only single channel game. Um, every other game can be played in single or dual channel mode. And again, you can customize your goal, your time settings, your difficulty level. Uh, so you can really get in there um, and get a little bit more interesting um, rather than just sitting there counting rounds. So um, do we have any questions uh, before I jump out of the app in real time um, that anyone would like to see? I'll just give you a couple seconds in the chat here. All right, I'm gonna jump back out of this. And that is pretty much the spiel. Um, M-Trigger is a really simple interface. It's a really low risk, low cost way. Uh, yes, Dorian, it is free on Apple and Android. Um, so yeah, you can download that. Patients can download it, athletes can download it. Um, we see that really commonly with you know, teams who have M-Trigger, they wanna travel with it. They wanna, you know, those guys are always, you know, go do your reps in your hotel room, right? So they have it on their phone and they're ready to go. Um, great for performance stuff like that long term just kind of activation and control uh it's super versatile right we, we see people use it from pelvic to occupational um all the way through um you know to athletic training and kind of our more basic sports medicine so it's really about just understanding what you want to know more about in terms of activation um anybody that walks through your door say i want to know more about that pop the electrodes on and you're ready to go so that's what we've got. This is recorded. Um, I will send this recording out to you guys in case you want to share it with some colleagues. Um, and do let us know if you have any questions or if we can do anything for you. Uh, we hope to hear from some of you in, in the near future. Um, and take care.